Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This here is episode three of Out of a Hat, the show about the history of video games, one random game at a time. Today, we're taking a look at a top-down roguelite space shooter called Black Sea Odyssey. Before we get to the game, though, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Chris, or CW719, and I'm a full-time content creator. You can find me streaming live on Twitch from Tuesday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can also find me on YouTube making these out of a hat videos, along with my new release videos called Future Dubs, where I try to create the most comprehensive monthly video release calendar on YouTube. When you finish this video, maybe you go take a look and see if there's anything for you coming up in the next couple of weeks. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Hover. Finally, if you like these videos enough that you'd like to support my work, you can find my Patreon linked below. All right. Let's talk about Black Sea Odyssey. Developed by Black Sea Odyssey LLC and published by Spiral Summit Games, Black Sea Odyssey is a top-down roguelike space shooter. When I drew the game initially, I knew nothing about it, which is just the way I like it. Initially released on PC in 2016, it eventually made its way to Xbox One in 2017 and PlayStation 4 and Switch in 2018. Here's the official description. Once a decade, the greatest huntsmen in the universe gather to compete in a legendary tournament known as the Black Sea Odyssey. Steeped in blood, ancient treasures, and a madness that wills them to delve deeper into the Black Abyss, these huntsmen compete for a chance to claim the ultimate glory of facing a creature of such insatiable ferocity and magnanimous size that its wingspan has been said to stretch across galaxies while its breath consumes black holes. It is a creature rumored to exist only in legend, the Titan of the Stars. Let's take a look at the back of the box as well. Rip apart enemies piece by piece. Eviscerate enemy creatures by ripping them apart with your harpoon. Fully destructible everything. Blast through fully destructible environments with your spear or harpoon. Hardcore roguelite elements. Featuring permadeath, procedural levels, and incredible replayability. So that's what they want you to think, but who's they? Let's take a bit here to talk about the developers. Black Sea Odyssey LLC was an independent game studio based out of Orlando, Florida, and was comprised of University of Central Florida graduates Peter Milko, Percy Lagandre, and Sean Pinnock. All three studied game design and development. They first showed off a prototype of Black Sea Odyssey during the Global Game Jam 2015. The game was inspired by the old arcade classic Asteroids and the novel The Old Man and the Sea. The team had secured a publisher for the game and had been working on it full-time since May of 2015. Sometime between May and October of 2015, their publisher, citing financial hardships, pulled out and stopped funding the project. The game was close to completion and was actually already greenlit on Steam, so the team did two things. First, they released an alpha demo, which was downloaded 6,500 times. Then the following month, they launched a Kickstarter to push them across the finish line. It appears to have run from November 12th, 2015 through December 11th, 2015. The goal was to reach $10,000 worth of funding with stretch goals. The campaign finished with 319 backers and $12,300 worth of funding, which was good enough to hit the first stretch goal, which included extreme difficulty mode and a new playable huntsman. The second stretch goal for a survival game mode and in-game bestiary wasn't met, but I did see a bestiary in the final version that I played. Now, my first impressions during my research for this game left me feeling pretty meh. Initially, the art wasn't something I was high on. It has a sort of paper craft look to it. It's by no means bad, it's just not an art style that appeals highly to me. I also don't really play a lot of twin stick shooters. There have been a couple that I've spent a good chunk of time on, but for the most part, it's a genre that if it went away entirely, I'd likely never notice. All that being said, one game that did come to mind when looking at videos and screenshots of Black Sea Odyssey was Pixel Junk Shooter. I remember having a really good time with that game, even though, once again, I didn't necessarily love it. Taking that formula, though, and adding to it roguelite RPG elements definitely intrigued me more than a standard twin-stick shooter would have. Now, while those may have been my first impressions, I can't really talk about a game without experiencing it for myself, though, right? So let's change gears to the game as I experienced it. 
Black Sea Odyssey opens with you choosing your character and their weapon. Initially, your only choice is to use the old man and the harpoon. You can unlock three additional characters by beating specific enemies as you play the game, and the 16 additional weapons are unlockable by satisfying certain criteria such as beating the game in 60 minutes, having 20 items at one time, and completing the bestiary. Full disclosure, in my hour and a half of the game, I didn't actually unlock another character or weapon to use, so I won't be able to speak to how other characters and weapons work in the game. After choosing your character, you choose your first bounty. The game works by creating a procedurally generated arena with various hotspots throughout that are home to enemies. These enemies run the gamut of being fodder for you to mow down, moderately difficult enemies with varying attack patterns, and the bounty, or boss monster, you chose initially. Apparently there are rare enemies that are even more difficult in some of the areas, but I never came across any in my short time with the game. I just saw a reference to them in various menus and whatnot. When you choose your character, weapon, and bounty, the game loads you in. Each level is made up of mostly open space, but has some barriers and walls throughout. You maneuver your ship using both sticks, one to move the ship itself, and the other to aim your shots. You have standard weapons, which in the case of the old man are spears, a secondary weapon, which is the one you chose in the menu, and that's about it. You pick up buffs and items through your runs, along with money which you can spend between missions to purchase various upgrades. Some of those upgrades include usable items like adrenaline shots and force fields, buffs like the ability to move and shoot faster, and weapon upgrades that fire cannons from the front of your ship every three seconds or a fireball that is generated every four seconds that circles your ship. Your ship also comes equipped with a radar that lets you move towards signals that are home to monsters and even shows treasure chests on the map that can be opened with keys. Each mission ends when you either take down your bounty or you die. Your health and items carry over from mission to mission and it apparently takes 9 missions to complete a run. Each mission ups the difficulty level and the furthest I ever made it in my time with the game was 5 or so. There's one mechanic I want to touch on, which I think is super neat, and not one I've seen implemented before. It's a dismemberment system. This may be exclusive to the harpoon, as it's the only weapon I had time to try, but after dealing enough damage to certain areas of enemies, those body parts may start to flicker. If you can line up your harpoon shot and land it on that damaged body part, you can rip the body part off. It's such a satisfying thing to pull off, as it does huge damage but also impacts the way the creature moves. For example, there's a squid monster in the game with two tentacles, a body part that spews poison balls, and a shield covering the front of its body. If you take out the two tentacles, the monster will be incapable of moving unless it charges up its poison shot and propels itself forward. It's such a neat system. All said and done, I actually had way more fun with Black Sea Odyssey than I would have thought going into it. It could be my love for roguelite elements in games, but really it's an interesting amalgamation of two genres that I think is pretty well done, especially for a studio's first game. While I enjoyed it, it isn't perfect. There were times where I needed the camera to zoom out just a little bit. Some of the enemies are large and would frequently leave my field of view, which would lead me on a blind chase to track it down again. The movement also feels stiff at times, and it seems like upgrades were very inconsistent. One run I had all weapon slots filled, there's eight, by the third mission or so, while other times, I didn't see a single upgrade drop, which obviously makes things difficult as the levels increase each mission. Black Sea Odyssey is currently available on Steam, PlayStation, Switch, and Xbox. The only Metacritic score it has is a 74 for PC. Black Sea Odyssey LLC appears to be defunct now, but the two founders have since started a new studio called Half Human Games. Their next game, Dwerve, is due out this month on May 31st. I've attached a link below to the Dwarf Steam page, a link to the Black Sea Odyssey page from Spiral Summit's website, and the link to their Kickstarter page just because there's a lot of relevant and interesting information about the game there as well. Finally, I also found a blog posted on Game Developer by Percy Legandre discussing their game development process in seven steps. It's not exactly earth-shattering stuff, but I'm always interested when a developer shares aspects of their development. Thank you all for tuning in to episode 3 of Out of a Hat. Black Sea Odyssey was a fun one to research and really epitomizes why I love making this show. It's a game I likely never would have experienced without the show. I had a lot of fun with it and I'm eager to tell the developer's story as best I can while sharing their game with you. I look forward to seeing you in episode 4 when we take a look at a narrative strategy RPG that tells a tale full of familiar faces, a familiar world, and a story that supposedly adapts to your every move. We'll see you soon.